Hello, and welcome back to the Stria Sports Podcast. I'm your host, Barker Stria, and on today's episode, we're going to be discussing five trades that I think need to happen before the NBA trade deadline on February 10th. I'm by no means professional, but I do love talking about sports, so thank you for joining me. These are obviously just mock trades that I personally would either like to see or think should happen. Values of players and returns for players may not be as accurate as they possibly could be, but I did my absolute best to create trades that I believe are fair for all parties. For every trade, I will list the teams involved and what they are receiving, as well as my analysis for the trade. So for trade one, I have the Oklahoma City Thunder receiving a 2024 first round pick and the Chicago Bulls receiving Kenrich Williams. Oklahoma City just keeps stockpiling on draft picks, especially first round picks. I've heard some Bulls fans saying that they would like to acquire Kenrich Williams from the Thunder, and I think they'd be more than willing to give up a future first round pick for him. For trade two, the Oklahoma City Thunder receive DeAndre Ayton, and the Phoenix Suns receive Derek Favors, Ty Jerome, Jeremiah Robinson Earl, a 2022 first round pick via the Los Angeles Clippers, and a 2024 first round pick via the Utah Jazz. The Suns may not want to offer DeAndre Ayton a max contract because they don't believe that he is in the same class as other members of his draft class, including Luka Doncic and Trey Young. With injuries limiting Ayton's production and availability, Phoenix could add two players who could contribute on a nightly basis. Oklahoma City has a plethora of first round picks that I think they'd be willing to let go of to bring in what could be their center of the future. Ayton, along with Gilgis Alexander and Josh Giddy, would create a strong, promising young core for OKC to build around. OKC also has the cap space to give him the contract he'd be looking for. Trade 3. The Philadelphia 76ers receive CJ McCollum, Ben McLemore, and a 2025 first round pick. And the Portland Trailblazers receive Ben Simmons. Philadelphia needs to get rid of Ben Simmons as soon as they can in my opinion. His value has only dropped since the season began due to him sitting out until he gets moved. Bringing in CJ McCollum adds a valuable three-point shooter that could help the Sixers in the latter half of the season and the playoffs, while McLemore adds a valuable defensive element. Being able to bring in players to the team that can contribute now is perfect for the Sixers who don't want to waste Joel Embiid's prime. For the Trailblazers, with Damian Lillard's status unknown for the rest of the season, Bringing in Ben Simmons, who is a former All-NBA and All-Defensive First Team player, adds a large presence to their backcourt. The Blazers' backcourt seriously lacked defense with the Lillard and McCollum duo, and Simmons can come in and instantly improve on that. Although Simmons can't shoot at the rate that McCollum can, he can be a valuable defensive asset and playmaker while Dame is the number one scoring option. Trade 4. The Indiana Pacers receive Gordon Hayward, Ish Smith, Josh Richardson, Aaron Nesmith, a 2023 first-round pick via the Charlotte Hornets, a 2023 first-round pick via the Boston Celtics, and a 2025 first-round pick via the Charlotte Hornets. The Charlotte Hornets receive Miles Turner and Bruno Fernando, and the Boston Celtics receive DeMontis Sabonis. So this is obviously a bit of a wild trade. Although I don't realistically see it happening, I wouldn't be disappointed if it did. I believe that the Pacers just need to blow it up and go full rebuild mode. They've been average for so long and something needs to change. Rumors have been floating around that they are open to trading guys like Miles Turner and DeMontis Sabonis, so they do just that in this one trade. Gordon Hayward can hang around for the year, probably help collect a couple wins, and then likely get traded for something else in the offseason. Josh Richardson and Ish Smith would also both likely be traded for assets due to their ages not really lining up with a rebuild but Aaron Nesmith can get playing time to see what they have in him. Although the other two teams hoped that those three draft picks would be late in the first round, they are all still extremely valuable to a team who should completely start over. Charlotte needs strong center play, and I think Miles Turner can fit that perfectly. At just the age of 25, he fits the timeline of what the Hornets are trying to accomplish and can be a key piece in the Hornets' future. As arguably the best shot blocker in the league, Turner adds valuable rim protection to a team whose primary center is Mason Plumley. No offense to him. I decided to also give them Bruno Fernando from the Celtics strictly for cap purposes, but at the age of 23, he can fit in well with the young team. The Celtics acquired DeMontis Sabonis, who had a breakout season last year where he averaged 20.3 points, 12 rebounds, and 6.7 assists. 
those were career highs in points and assists. They add a big man who can instantly step in and produce on any given night and would be one of their top scoring options immediately. He could very well be the piece that the Celtics have been missing as they failed to meet expectations year after year. Trade 5. The Philadelphia 76ers received Derrick Rose, Evan Fournier, Obi Toppin, and a 2023 first round pick, and the New York Knicks received Ben Simmons. Like the 76ers Trailblazers trade mentioned earlier, I just think that the Sixers need to get rid of Ben Simmons while he still has any value. Now for some, this may even seem like the Knicks are giving up too much to get a guy who hasn't played all season. Derrick Rose is 33 and Evan Fournier is 29 and on a bad contract, so this trade has to do with the Knicks getting younger. I believe Simmons can come in and be a promising building block to go alongside of RJ Barrett and Julius Randle. They had a former first team all defensive player that raises the defensive ceiling of their young team. They surprisingly made the playoffs last season, so adding a young player can increase their chances of making the playoffs for years to come. For the Sixers, they get two veteran guards who can instantly contribute down the stretch when it matters the most. Rose may be 33 and currently injured, but he can provide a strong veteran presence that Philly lacks at the point guard position. This also may be Rose's best and last chance at finally winning a championship. Adding a second year player in Obi Toppin is also beneficial for the Sixers, who may be looking to move on from Tobias Harris's contract after the season. Toppin has a lot of potential and could be molded into a star with the tutelage of a guy like Joel Embiid. Trade 6, a bonus trade. The San Antonio Spurs received DeMontis Sabonis, and the Indiana Pacers received Thaddeus Young, Devin Vassell, Lonnie Walker IV, a 2023 first round pick, and a 2023 second round pick via Indiana, so they get their own second round pick back. Like the wild three-team trade from earlier, I think the Pacers need to get rid of Sabonis and go full rebuild mode. Thaddeus Young has an expiring contract this offseason and they could use that money to bring in someone who could play a bigger role in their future. Devin Vassell is only 21 and Lonnie Walker is only 23, so both players can easily fit the timeline of a team rebuild. They also get their own second round pick back and they get a first round pick that could be easily close to or inside the lottery. When you think of the Spurs, you think of dominant big men. David Robinson and Tim Duncan immediately come to mind. Now I'm not saying that Sabonis is anywhere close to what either of those two were, but he's a young big man that the Spurs can build around. They already have a promising young point guard in DeJounte Murray, so adding a running mate in Sabonis instantly makes the Spurs a better team. I personally think that the league is better when the Spurs are a good team, and this is a way to make that happen. I'm your host, Parker Stria, and this has been the Stria Sports Podcast. Our random sport fact of the day is that Barry Bonds is the MLB's all-time leader in home runs with 762. As always, thank you for tuning in, and don't forget to hit that notification bell for whenever a new video gets posted.